Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see you all. Lovely to see you all at home. Hello. Give us a wave. Yes, and you. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, right, some exciting things to uh, tell you this morning. Uh, Processo, who has been living here and worshipping with us for uh, quite a while now, has just got his uh, notification that the documents are in the post and his uh, desire to stay in the UK uh, has been officially sanctioned. So he's allowed to stay here. So, Processo, welcome. I think I need to go down a little bit, Sean. I'm, I'm a bit echoey. That's better. There we go. So, uh, congratulations. More international news. Um, you may have heard something about Ukraine on the, on the news. We are continuing to make a collection uh, at the back of church. So there are two collection plates, one for church and one next to it with a, a suitable label is for the DEC, the Disasters Emergency Committee, which is a conglomeration of lots of UK charities, uh, including Christian Aid and Tear Fund and Oxfam and all the rest. And for every pound you give, the government gives a pound out of its generosity too. So it's a very good way of getting aid to Ukraine. Sad news, Rich Townend's got COVID. 
I'm so sorry, and so has Emma. Uh, they're not particularly poorly, just a little bit uh, groggy at the moment, but do hold them. And Emma's parents as well have also picked it up in your prayers. It is still going around. I was really hoping it would just disappear, but it sort of seems the cases are ratcheting up again. So uh, we're going to continue to wear face coverings if we can, try and keep our distance, and, and be sensible and look after each other. More exciting uh, news, uh, we have been planning for some weeks a new group for our teenagers, or sort of 12 pluses anyway, and uh, that's starting today. We've recruited and trained some wonderful volunteers. Um, would you like just to stand up and uh, give us a wave, wonderful volunteers? So we've got Simon, and we've got uh, Peter and Karen, we've got John and Karen, and we've got Angela, isn't that great? And at the moment, we have one teenager, so... <laughs> So it's, it's a six to one ratio, it's probably the best in the world. So Lucas, you're going to have the best uh, teaching and encouragement possible, um, but we believe and uh, uh, are convinced that this group will grow and grow. And there were the two other teens lined up, but they've got COVID as well. So that will be great. Bible study again tonight, as we're doing during Lent, looking at Exodus, 6 o'clock. We had a dozen people last week. It was a really good, really good time, a little bit of informal worship, and then split into small groups to study our next bit of Exodus. So do come if you can at 6 o'clock. Denise has asked me to say that uh, she's running another coffee morning on the 26th of March. So that's a Saturday, 10 till 12 in the morning, with an Easter theme. And as always, her coffee mornings raise money for Open Doors, the charity that supports persecuted Christians throughout the world. And there's an opportunity to send a card to a persecuted Christian if you come. Saturday the 26th of March. Now, there's some woodland at the rear of Partridge Close, which is uh, one of the, uh, those kind of seabird um, roads. Uh, how do I describe it? It's off Kingsgate on your way out of town, sort of opposite the golf course, that little estate. There's some woodland at the back, and there's a campaign group being formed to protect it and perhaps put it into public ownership. They're really looking for one or two extra people. They reckon it's not an arduous task, but could do... So if, if, if you're passionate about saving woodland, then uh, have a word with me. I'll put you in touch with the people running that. Barbara J says... Please pay your money to go to Scargill in May or she'll send the boys around. <laughs> That's pretty much what she meant, I'm sure. And yes, we do have the boys around here. Um, we've got a picture of my piano soiree. Uh, That's this coming Friday. So we're going to be uh, doing it online on Facebook if you want to watch it from the comfort of your own home. But for the full magic experience, why not come to church for a live concert? Uh, it's free. It's Friday. It's 7 o'clock. And Jaden's coming home as well to play the bass for it. So that will be great. There will be lovely refreshments afterwards. And we will be tugging our heartstrings and asking for money for Tabs International, the school in Kenya that we support. There's some exciting news, pictures from a visit that's just been made. Uh, so that's all good. I could do with someone to help run the live stream that day. So if anyone would like to volunteer... I'd be really grateful. I'll do it all the setting up, just needs the buttons pressing at the time. We have some birthdays. Jackie missed um, being sung to last week, so we're going to sing to Jackie. You can't escape uh, Jackie Moore. And Antonio, Processo's little boy, is two. And Antonio has brought us a cake to share. So, isn't that fantastic? So, shall we sing any other birthdays? We've got Jackie and Antonio. No one else admitting. Who's? Maria's next week. Even if you stay at home, we'll sing to you anyway. So you can run, but you can't hide. So we will sing this week to Jackie and Antonio. Fantastic. Shall we stand and sing our first hymn, The God of Abraham Praise? There's a good one. A blast from the past, but what a fantastic hymn.
like to sit down, please? We're going to hear later about Abraham and uh, God's promise to him in our first reading. The God of Abraham is also our God. Through the ages, he has remained faithful and is here now, wanting to hear our praises. So let's say this prayer to him together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. We're in the season of Lent, a time of penitence when we ask God's Holy Spirit to search our hearts, clean them out and make us right for him. And so using these words from Psalm 51, a very heartfelt psalm of repentance from King David, let's confess our sins. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear God's words of forgiveness. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The music group's going to lead us in our next song. I think we'll stand because it's, uh, well, it, we need to do that. So feel free to clap along, sing along, whatever you'd like to do. Blessed be your name. A wonderful song of God's faithfulness in the dark times as well as the good times. Let's stand. Blessed be your name in the land that is blessed before. Give it. 
let's remain standing. We're going to pray for our young people as they leave us for their groups. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gift of life to us, young and old. And we pray that whether here in church or in godly play or in the uh, 12 pluses group, we would meet with you and learn from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, Rachel's standing at the door. So, uh, uh, younger people, if you'd like to go and line up, she will take you out. We will see you later as we share communion together. Everyone else, if you'd like to stand, uh, sit down. those children isn't that fabulous we are blessed indeed we are going to pray the words of the collect the prayer of today so let's say these words together almighty god by the prayer and discipline of lent may we enter into the mystery of christ's sufferings and by following in his way come to share in his glory through jesus christ our lord amen now, Maria is going to come and read our first reading to us. Do you want to read it from your phone, or do you want a proper, a proper book? Yes, why not? A proper book. So, while we find it, it's Genesis chapter 15, 1 to 18, and it's the story of God's promise to Abra Abraham. You remember, um, poor old Abraham, or Abraham in those days, didn't have any children at all, and he was very old, and so was his poor wife, and yet God promises him loads of descendants. Thank you very much. Where am I reading it, sorry? Um, 15, 1 to 18. 1 to 18, okay. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza and Damascus? And Ab 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 Abraham said, you have given me no children, so no servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he cited it to him as his righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the earth of the ch sorry, Chaldons to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I shall gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought all of these to him, cut them in two and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. The birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell deep into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and that they will be enslaved and ill-treated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation of your descendants will come back here for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and the darkness had fallen, a smoking bazaar with blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. And on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, to your descendants, I give this land from the Waldi of Egypt to the great river, the Europhites. Oh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Oh, this is the word of the Lord.
Thank you so much, Maria. Yes, that reading does end quite abruptly because the, the people who compiled the lectionary um, took pity on all the readers. Uh, so it ends, and I'll give you this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river, the, e the Euphrates. And then the next verse is, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Kadmonites, the Hittites. You know, it's enough to make anyone resign, isn't it? <laughs> Well, God kept his promise, and uh, Abraham did become a great nation. He had a son who had a son who had lots of sons. It became the nation of Israel. And eventually, this was the nation to which the Lord Jesus came. Did they welcome him with open arms? Chris is going to come and read our gospel reading, and we will find out what Jesus says to Jerusalem and about the reception he was about to get. I've had the look of the drawer, I've got the short one. <laughs> Luke 13, uh, verses 31 to 35. Jesus' sorrow for Jerusalem. At that time, some Pharisees came to see Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox, I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings? But you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And that note of sorrow and anguish continues in our next song, which the music group is uh, going to uh, sing and play now. We're going to sing, Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice and pain. And again, with the news of Ukraine being very much in our minds and hearts, this just seems very appropriate, doesn't it? So would you please stand?
And now by the magic of video, Rich is going to preach to us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be with you, not quite in person. Uh, I've got COVID. Um, it's caught up with me eventually. Feel okay, but uh, obviously I have to stay away for a few days. So I'll be joining in the service today um, and watching my own sermon back and making lots of favourable comments on it, I'm sure, hopefully. <laughs> or I could maybe make comments about what I could have done better. Let's see how it goes. So, in today's Gospel, we have Jesus grieving over a city, and a city that is, is at the centre of his own faith, and yet a city that has rejected God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. These words of, of great despair are a reminder of what is to come. As I think about the emotions of Jesus, I am drawn to parallels here between this account and Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yet Jesus is not in Jerusalem when he says these words. In Luke's carefully detailed narrative of the events of Christ's life, he splits the gospel roughly into three parts. The first part is Jesus' early life and ministry. We discover about his birth and baptism, teaching and miracles, such as the, the feeding of the 5,000. And at this early point, Jesus' true identity is hidden from view. The second chunk of Luke begins towards the end of chapter 9. By this point, uh, Peter has just declared that Jesus is Messiah. And Jesus has also predicted his death to the disciples, not once, but twice. So his purpose of coming to earth is becoming clear for all to see. And it's this second part of Luke that begins with a single but really loaded verse that literally signifies a change in direction. Verse 51 says, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Resolutely, that's not a word we often hear, is it? But it's very purposeful. He was turning for Jerusalem. So it's in this second part of the gospel that the dialogue turns a little bit darker. There are plenty of parables and healings, but there's lots of warnings too. Lots of criticisms and challenges to, the, to those in authority. There's a sense of anger in the way Jesus speaks. And the third and final part is when Jesus reaches Jerusalem itself with that triumphant entry and all of the events that we mark in Holy Week, ending, of course, with his death and resurrection. So the bigger picture of today's reading is located in that second stage that I was talking about as Jesus resolutely heads towards Jerusalem, but crisscrosses through towns and villages on his route, heading south through Galilee to Judea. By now, people are aware of him. He has something of a celebrity status, you might say. And that's why the Pharisees seek him out. We often think of the Pharisees as a bit of a, it's a, bit of a dirty word, but Luke is the most sympathetic of all the gospel writers towards them. So the Pharisees say, get away from here to Jesus, get away from here, which sounds quite threatening. But then they say, because Herod wants to kill you. So are they protecting Jesus from danger or are they trying to trap him? Luke doesn't hint at the answer. But what is more telling is actually how Jesus responds. Jesus says, go and tell that fox, look here, I'm casting out demons today and tomorrow and completing my healings. I'll be finished by the third day. And then Jesus says, no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. These are really strong words. Go and tell that fox. No prophet can die outside Jerusalem. So the fox is King Herod and Jesus 
says, uh, Jesus shows he's got no fear of Herod and he's got an absolute focus on fulfilling his journey to Jerusalem where the, he knows that he is, is much more than a prophet. He's actually going there to meet his death. But there's this clever look ahead to the completion of his work in that bit of dialogue there when he says, I'll be finished by the third day. In other words, Jesus will follow God's timing and God's plan to death in Jerusalem and then resurrection three days later, the third day. Jesus then stops addressing the Pharisees directly and talks about Jerusalem. And as is often the case in scripture, this seems particularly powerful because it's repeated. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This grievance over a city seems so strange because cities don't have feelings. Yet later in Luke's gospel, as Jesus rides triumphantly on a donkey into the city on the third part of Luke's uh, journey through the gospel, um, as Jesus rides in on a donkey into Jerusalem, the Pharisees tell Jesus to rebuke the disciples. Now the disciples have been shouting, um, behold, here is the new king. And the, the Pharisees are saying, they can't say that, and rebukes Jesus for what his disciples are saying. And Jesus says, if they keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. Even the stones of the buildings will cry out. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jesus talks about the holy city, not as a collection of buildings, but as if it's one close family, as if it's one of his close family members. He yearns for Jerusalem. He is pained by Jerusalem. He pours out his love for Jerusalem and must call out its wrongdoings. The people of Jerusalem have turned away from him. Some have even turned on him. And then Jesus used this very famous metaphor. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. It's, it's a cute image, isn't it? But actually, it would have brought to mind a disturbing and familiar image to those in whichever rural Galilean community he was speaking. Now, if you've ever kept hens or pigeons or any kind of small animal that might live outside, then you'll know that at dusk, you need to make sure those creatures are safely tucked up in their hutch or loft or whatever you might call their house. Now, if you don't do that, and I imagine this will have happened to, to some people who are watching, if you don't do that, then those birds or animals are in grave danger. The fox is a crafty and opportunist predator. The fox will find its way in and kill whatever it finds. And this is a powerful image that Jesus is using. Because dead hens have often been found with their chicks under their wings after being attacked by foxes or other predators, the hen's instinct is to protect and to nurture whatever the cost. Jesus' destiny is to go to Jerusalem and to die. He is the mother hen protecting the chicks from danger and Herod the fox is part of that danger but actually it's much bigger than that there's many more foxes out there Jesus will take upon himself the full force of the disaster he is predicting for Israel and the temple he will sacrifice himself on behalf of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, so much more than stones and buildings. 
course it's not the stones and buildings he's talking about, it's the people. Each individual man, woman and child that Jesus loves so much that he will lay down his life for them. It would be inappropriate as we consider this passage to not also consider what's going on in our world at this time. Our gospel passage serves as a reminder not just of how Jesus looks at Jerusalem because we know that actually Jesus came for the whole world. So as we think of Jesus looking upon Jerusalem and grieving, we also think of Jesus looking at different parts of our world and grieving now. At Kiev and Kharkiv and Kabul, at Moscow and Minsk and Mariupol. We hope and pray that his protection will be with all of those who are fleeing in terror and all of those who are staying behind to defend themselves against the fox. But the bigger truth is this, our world is broken. Jesus came to put things right and he will come back to finish the job. So we, must also put ourselves right with him. Not just for ourselves, but so we can be his lights in this world of darkness. Jesus turned to face Jerusalem. But the people of Jerusalem turned away. During Lent, we are reminded of what we should do. Turn away from your sins and turn to Christ. Amen. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Jesus, our mother hen, who gives his life Shelter us under your protecting wings, not just us, but all your people. Keep us safe from the enemy and bring us to eternal life with you and all your people. Amen. Amen. We're going to proclaim that Christian faith we share with God's people worldwide. Shall we stand? We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And would you like to sit down? Liz is going to come and lead us in our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to pray for the church and for the world and to thank you for your goodness. Dear Lord, it seems that just as we have begun to emerge from the COVID pandemic, although it is still with us, another world crisis has burst suddenly into our lives and onto our screens a very real threat to world peace and war, destruction and loss of life for those in Ukraine. Our hearts are aching for the people there, 
for those who have had to flee and those who have stayed behind or cannot leave. We pray for the Ukrainian people and their leaders. We pray for those who have been injured or have lost loved ones. And we also remember the young Russian soldiers misled into being where they are. On behalf of all these people, we pray from the Psalms. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Lord, we know that the only true and lasting peace comes from you. We are asking for that miracle to come and to come soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, we know that wherever there is good in the world, it is from you. Thank you for the generosity and support being shown to the Ukrainian refugees, for the leaders of those countries, for the aid agencies, and for all those involved, some driving hundreds of miles to take people back to their homes in other parts of Europe. We pray that the response at all levels in the UK will be as generous. Keep us faithful in prayer and alert to what we can do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, thank you for your church across the world and for its witness in times of trouble. We pray for all branches of the church in Ukraine and Russia and for all churches in places where there is war, injustice, poverty and fear. May they know your presence with them as they strive to serve others. Give them the protection and resources they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous Father, we pray for our nation, especially at this time when the cost of so many things is going up and there will be many who will just not have enough to live. Help us as a church to be there for one another and to be a place of safety and support to our local community. We pray that the government and the council will find ways to ease the burdens of those in greatest need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all healing, we pray for Rich and Emma and their whole family as they go through COVID. You make the sick well, and the dead to rise, and you bind up the brokenhearted. In the quiet of our hearts, we pray now for any who are in need of your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the blessings we have received. Thank you for Processo's good news this morning and for our no new young people's group. Thank you for welcoming each one of us into your family. May we follow in your son's footsteps this Lent, remembering everything that he has shown us of you. Help us to meet all the challenges we face in our everyday lives. 
Help us to let go of what needs to be left behind. Help us to take up our cross each day as his disciples and to use our time wisely in your service. As we gather around your communion table this morning, we pray for your whole creation and we remember that we are members of the communion of saints, past, present and future. In an uncertain world, may these words be written on our hearts. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Liz. Now, in three weeks' time, we have the excitement that is our annual general meeting. Yes! <laughs> All Anglican churches have an annual parochial church meeting, as it's called, and we will be electing uh, new members to our parochial church council, or PCC, and also church wardens. Now, one of our two wardens, Barbara and Diana, is not intending to stand again. I'm not telling you which. Um, so we will certainly need one new warden. We also could do with new members of the PCC. So whether you've been coming to church for years or whether just the, the last few months and you think, actually, no, I'd like to be part of the sort of the, the, uh, the underneath mechanics of how the, the church keeps going and, and does its uh, uh, mission and witness, then next week there'll be an opportunity to, to sign up and, and uh, put yourself forward for election. Isn't that exciting? So uh, be thinking and praying about that. We need uh, good people who are going to be part of uh, hearing God's voice and leading the church into the future. See if that's going to be you. Shall we stand to share the peace? <coughs> Romans chapter 5 says this. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's turn to each other and give each other a wave of peace. <laughs> peace with you. Peace over at home. Hi. One day we'll be able to have a handshake and a hug. Thank you to all those who contribute uh, so generously to the work of this church. So we're passing the virtual offering baskets around right now. They're just invisible. Um, so thank you for putting money in the basket at the back or giving online or giving by standing order or however you do it. We're so grateful and for your time and talents as well. Our offertory hymn before we prepare to receive communion is another one which speaks of God's care for this troubled world filled with compassion for all creation.
The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Shall we sit or kneel for the Lord's prayer? As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Body and body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Body and body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Music group is going to lead us in heavenly armour. The battle belongs to the Lord. Shall we stand and sing? online earlier we were joined by a, a number of different people including Betty Salisbury lovely to see you again Betty and uh, Rene Hemingway and Lorna Hall from Sheffield and lots of others so uh, thank you so much for joining us those of you in church of course get to have some of Antonio's birthday cake <laughs> so with that firmly in our Lenten fasting minds <laughs> we say go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.